we are going to Oaxaca today. I have eaten tamales all across this country, but I think tamales oaxaqueños are some of the absolute best. They're very different in style to a lot of the tamales you find in different regions, particularly the north and in Texas where I grew up, but these tamales are incredibly flavorful and delicious. They're wrapped in banana leaves, and I'm gonna show you three different versions of it with three sauces. And because I love this dish so much and because I think it's going to be an incredibly beautiful episode, I've asked my friend Fabian Martinez, who is an amazing photographer, to come up and join the crew and take lots of pictures of these beautiful tamales. Hola. <laughs> One of the things that I think is really important to know is that if you're using fresh masa, and I really, really want you to try and find oh. fresh masa, it's amazing. It's such a game changer, particularly with tamales but it's very perishable. The longer it sits out at room temperature or uh, even in the refrigerator, it will start to oxidize and it'll start to pick up some off flavors and even turn a little sour after a couple of days. I'm actually gonna mix the masa first because once I add the oil, it'll actually protect the masa from the oxygen. It'll create this little waterproof, airproof barrier around the masa and it will prevent it from oxidizing as quickly. All masa is a little bit different. Sometimes it's gonna be dry and crumbly like this, and sometimes it's gonna be really soft and pliable like this. The thing that is really important is that you don't add too much liquid, but you also add enough so that it doesn't stick to your hands. In the recipe, I call for one and three quarters cup. I'm gonna start with half a cup, and it's super hot, and you should put, make your, uh, you should heat up your stock before you put it in. I'm gonna put all of the salt in here because I want the salt to dissolve in the liquid so that it evenly distributes through the masa. I'm just gonna pour this in and then just start kneading it. Okay, so this looks good and it's ready to add my manteca. How much am I putting in there? One and a quarter cup, okay. You need to feel the masa. You need to see how it feels. And the way that you know that you've had enough oil or lard in the masa is that it releases from your hand. So this is my hand now. This is with just chicken stock. And you'll see after I knead half of this in there, it will be completely clean. Yeah, so you can see it doesn't stick, it's tr it wants to, but it's not. Another reason why tamales are so special to me is because when I was 12 years old, my mom took uh, two weeks off during my Christmas vacation and she wanted to learn how to make tamales. My mom had an incredible sense of smell. She could smell a dish, she never had to taste it. She knew exactly what was in it and exactly what it needed. And she could balance flavors just through smelling. And so I remember us making tamales for the very first time together. And it became just a part of our family's heritage. My mom passed away about 10 years ago and she, was the only one that, that hosted the tamaladas in our family. And thankfully, I had her recipe. I made her write it down and she told me how she did it and I took copious notes. We were going to continue to make these tamales with the family and I had a very specific request that we include all of the kids in the family, that I wanted to cook it with them because they were the ones that were going to continue the tradition on in our family. This salsa verde is going to be tomatillo based. Normally I like to cut the tomatillos with something else because uh, they can be really sour. But in this case, we've got a lot of corn, we've got a lot of manteca, and we also have chicken that it's going to need to brighten up. So we are just gonna throw these into a pot. We're also adding habanero because I like it spicy.
for you, Jerry. I'm gonna take the seats up. You. And one. One loves the banana. You do? No. <laughs> Now that it's come to a boil, I'm reducing it to a simmer and cover it up. About half an hour, it'll be really, really tender and ready to blend. <laughs> <laughs> While the salsa verde is cooking, we're gonna start the salsa roja, which I'm gonna be using mainly guajillos, but also some anchos and chili de arbol because again, I like heat. This is come to a boil. I'm reducing to a simmer and covering that up. And in 30 minutes, this will be ready to blend. And while we wait, I'm gonna pull the rest of this chicken out. And I'll tell you the story about these tamales. I was leaving Oaxaca, the state of Oaxaca and driving to Chiapas. So I decided to stop in Juchitan, this small town right near the border. It is a complete foodie town. Now having visited probably almost 300 little towns, pueblitos and, and cities around Mexico, I can tell almost instantly whether a place has a love or a passion for food, whether they cater to a tourist crowd or whether it's there for the locals. And this was very much a city for the locals and food for the locals. It's a small town that had been devastated by the 2017 earthquake and they weren't given enough money from the government to rebuild. And so a lot of the buildings that are in the town center, in the Centro Histórico, are actually still pretty badly in need of repair. They had a really big mercado that had been completely destroyed, and so it had been abandoned and closed up. But because these people love their food, they had just moved the mercado out into the streets. And everybody at night would gather in the mercado or in the streets and you would you would eat sometimes you would buy additional food you'd have tacos and i was asking everybody in the mercado where to get the best tamales and 100 percent of the people talked about this old woman who had the best tamales in huchitan they also said that she was actually really mean she was really mean. <laughs> she didn't actually seem like she enjoyed selling tamales and nor did she seem like she actually wanted me to eat her tamales, but it was the best tamal I have ever eaten in my entire life. To the point where I was like, okay, I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna buy some more because I needed to try all the different kinds that she made. And she was so annoyed to see me again, but I didn't care because I knew what I wanted. And I just sat in the Zoclo just eating tamales, and it was one of the best memories of my trip. And I knew that I had to replicate the, the tamales that she made. Oh, it is ready. Turn it off, and then we will carefully pour this into the blender. I guess I wasn't so careful, but <laughs> I'm a professional. spicy, but it'll calm down once it's in the thermal. Okay, so we are using banana leaves. These are the flavors of Chiapas and Oaxaca. I'm going to toast these. They will give it a little bit of flavor, but also they're gonna help soften it up. Although these leaves are actually pretty soft, but 
once we start to fold them, we're going to want them really, really, really soft. So we're just going to move it over the burner. You'll see it kind of change colors. We just want it to be nice and glossy looking. Okay, and now we will do the same thing on the other side. Even though I made two salsas for this video, I actually have some leftover mole from another shoot. There's a mole recipe in my book. I would definitely recommend you uh, making that mole and then you can use the leftovers for this uh, tamal recipe. I'm gonna divide up the chicken. This is actually not in the book, but since I'm gonna be making three salsas and I don't want the chicken to dry out while it sits, I'm just gonna divide the chicken up and then toss it in a little bit of sauce. It's going to prevent it from drying out. Also, as it sits, it's gonna soak up those delicious salsas. Now we are ready to start assembling. Okay, so this step, I'm going to trim out the banana leaves. So what's important here, there's like a really tough fibrous rib that I'm gonna pull out, or I'm gonna cut out, and then I want these to be about 12 inches by 14 inches. That is the optimal amount of space I need to properly fold this. And if there are any holes, which there are a few holes, you may wanna double up just to make sure that nothing leaks out. So the first thing that goes down, and I'm using measuring cups for this, this is half a cup of masa. And then I just wanna spread it out a little bit. You don't have to go too crazy. Now we're just gonna get a little bit of the chicken. You don't wanna to go too much. I have to remind myself, I'm not building a taco here. We don't need a lot of chicken. Just kind of push it down. One more piece, because I can't resist, whatever. <laughs> and then just a little bit of salsa. And it's fine if it runs up a little, it's fine. Oof, it looks so good. I'm gonna fold it up and then over. This lechon is from a future episode of Mi Cocina, but I happen to have it now because I have special powers. Oh my God. Wow. Look at that. Oh. I just put my scrap banana leaves into the bottom of this pot. This is one of my largest stock pots. And I have this rack. So this is actually what is commonly used here to steam tamales. You basically just need to get the tamales up off the bottom and you want them to be above the water line. I'm just going to fill this with a little bit of water. So now we're going to just arrange the tamales into the pot. All right, let's move this back to the back. I'm gonna cover it, and as soon as I hear it starting to boil, I'll reduce the heat. It's important that you use your sense of hearing to listen for the water. If you hear water boiling in the pot, you know that there's obviously enough water to keep cooking. If you don't hear anything, that means that your water has evaporated and you need to add more. Are you ready? Yes. <laughs> Let's go check. Okay, this is the sad part because we're only checking. We're actually not gonna eat them yet. Oh, look at that. Oh my God, they look so good. So this is how you check to see if they're done. You literally just pull them out or pull one out and then cover that back up. Now we have to let this sit for at least five minutes. If I try and open it up now, even if the masa was perfectly cooked, it's still gonna try and stick to the leaf. So you wait five minutes and then if you open it and it releases itself, it doesn't stick to the banana leaf, it's perfectly cooked. Three, two, one. Happy tamales! Voila! Let's go in. It's time to open our presents! Oh, okay.
Mikosina will be available in bookstores on May 3rd, 2022. All right, we've waited long enough. I have to be honest, I'm, I think I'm gonna go for the mole. Mm. I feel like the mole almost on its own was a little bit too sweet, but because the masa is so creamy and nutty, it balances each other out. And you get like that really nice little pop of the chicken. You get a little bit of the hoja santa and then the chocolate from the mole. It was such a good bite. All right, I think my boys have waited long enough. Are you guys ready to eat? I'm so ready. You got your forks? Tres, dos, uno. Yes. I really want you to try this. It is definitely something that you're gonna need to do on a weekend, but once you master this technique, you can make tamales from any part of the country. It's basically just a steamed corn dumpling, but these are so incredibly flavorful. And if you like this recipe, if you like me, if you like this mini series, make sure you hit like and subscribe and you will be notified as soon as there's another Mi Cocina episode. And on the next episode of Mi Cocina, we'll be making cochinita pipil. Mmm. Oh my god.